All right, so the first drug that we're going to look at is L-DOPA. L-DOPA is otherwise called levodopa. That's the same thing. This is a dopamine synthesis precursor. So you started with L-DOPA, and then that got turned into dopamine by the enzyme LAADC, L-amino acid decarboxylase. So this has to actually happen within the synapse. So here, dopamine then is going into synaptic vesicles that can then be released. So LAADC is in different areas of the body, but we need to get the L-DOPA into the cell itself in the brain in order for the dopamine to be made there. So when I talk about mechanisms of action, I give you three different levels, and this will happen all year. I give you the molecular level, which is what is it binding to? What is the first thing that's actually happening? Cellular, which is what's the effect of that? And then clinical, which is what types of things can we do with that then? So in this case, what we're doing is we're increasing our synaptic dopamine levels. So the molecular mechanism of action was that it was a precursor for dopamine synthesis and that it is then converted by LAADC to dopamine. And you don't have to be able to spell out or write out L-amino acid decarboxylase. Just remember LAADC. The cellular effect then, the cellular mechanism, is that increase in synaptic dopamine, and that is occurring in the striatum because that's where the dopamine is being released. It's not being released in the substantia nigra. But, as we talked about, there are a lot of other dopamine pathways and a lot of other dopamine synapses in the brain, and so every dopamine synapse is going to get a little L-dopa boost. So you're going to have this extra dopamine effect a lot of different systems in the body that are going to cause the side effects. And then clinically, by increasing dopamine in the striatum, you're going to help treat motor disorders and Parkinson's. So with L-DOPA, we're going to get the side effects MGPA, which were our expected pro-dopaminergic side effects for all Parkinson's agents, which were motor, GI, psychiatric, and autonomic. And when we talk about the metabolism and we talk about the um, pharmacokinetics of L-DOPA, we're going to see that it's a very unique drug and it has a really short half-life and has a lot of fluctuation between when it's in the working dose and when it's outside of a working dose. And we call the a working dose on and the not working phase off. And so this is due to some really complex absorption and metabolism, and we're going to talk about those specifically. So when we look at the absorption, distribution, meta metabolism, and excretion, or ADME, in L-DOPA, we're going to think about the fact that we have to make a drug, we have to have it that crosses the blood-brain barrier. And it has to cross the blood-brain barrier because the synthesis has to happen in the presynaptic terminal. But it's also having effects in the GI and in the bloodstream outside of the blood brain barrier. So we talked about how L-DOPA was synthesized into dopamine by LAADC. And that LAADC is also in the GI tract and in the bloodstream. So when you take L-DOPA, the first LAADC it sees is actually in the GI, then what gets absorbed into the blood, and then what gets absorbed into neurons. So one way that L-DOPA can go is to dopamine, but a couple other things can happen to it as well. It can be metabolized and broken down by catecho-O-methyltransferase, COMT, into some inactive products, or dopamine itself can be broken down by monoamine oxidase B into inactive. So both of these, okay, so here's the really good stuff. Here's what's happening in the GI tract, and then the bloodstream, and then the brain. So L-DOPA itself looks a lot like an amino acid, and so it's going to have to be absorbed 
into the stump, from the stomach into the intestine wall, into the body. And what it's going to do is it's going to use one of those amino acid transporters. So those amino acid transporters that we talked about in digestion and absorption are going to be able to be saturated. So if you are eating a high-protein meal that has a lot of amino acids that are similar to L-DOPA, then they're going to compete with each other. And this is one of the only drugs you're going to find that competes with high-protein meals for absorption. So it really can't be eaten with a high-protein meal. Now it's in your stomach, you swallowed it, and you're going to see 98% of that L-DOPA is going to be converted either in the blood or the gut, and only 2% of the L-DOPA is going to get into the brain. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Our problem was that we had a lot of dopamine being made in the GI and in the blood, and we didn't have much L-DOPA getting in through the blood-brain barrier into the brain where we want it. So what can we do here? And this is where pharmacology gets really cool. We're going to ask ourselves, what's the best solution to get it into the brain? Well, how about let's block LAADC? If we block LAADC in the gut, then we're not going to be able to turn L-DOPA into dopamine there. And so we're going to decrease GI side effects because they're not, not going to be as much dopamine, and we're going to increase the amount of L-DOPA that's available to be absorbed into the blood. And if we have a drug that also goes into the blood, so the drug is absorbable, and so now we have it in the blood, we're also going to block LAADC here, and now we're going to have more L-DOPA here going through the blood-brain barrier. So now, by blocking LAADC in the gut and in the blood, we've decreased the amount of GI side effects, and we've greatly increased the amount of that L-DOPA dose that gets through into the brain. Now, what's the one problem that you can see? That problem is we also use LAADC in the brain, and that was where we wanted it, right? We have the synaptic terminal here, we had the L-DOPA being turned into dopamine by LAADC. And if we block the LAADC there, then what was the point of taking the L-DOPA? That's not going to help us anything. So here's where we use our blood-brain barrier, and we make sure that we design a drug that blocks LAADC. that does not cross the blood-brain barrier. So now that drug is not going to get into the brain. And you have the block here in the GI, and you have the block here in the blood, but you allow dopamine to be created in the synapse. So look at this. We have a drug called Carbidopa, and I think that the easiest way to remember this is dopa is for dopamine, and carby is for carboxylase. So Carbidopa is an L-amino acid decarboxylase for dopamine. So I often forget this, which one is, we'll talk about a COMT inhibitor as well, and I have to usually go step it through in my brain to remember which one is the decarboxylase drug. So there's your hint. So that is our drug that's going to inhibit peripheral LAADC conversion. So we're inhibiting that conversion to dopamine, and by doing that, we're reducing the amount of dopamine, and so we're reducing the GI effects in the GI, reducing our nausea and vomiting. And that's a big deal because L-DOPA on its own had a lot of nausea and vomiting. We're also decreasing the oral dose of L-DOPA that we need to get an effective dose into the brain. And because it's around longer and it's not getting broken down so quickly in the gut, we're actually also increasing the half-life 
if you take a look at the um, at the pharmacokinetics, if you have L dopa being absorbed, if you have really really rapid breakdown in the gut, then it's going to look like that. But if you can slow down the breakdown in the gut because you got rid of LAADC, then I'm just going to draw it over here so I don't have to overlay it. You'll get the same up curve, but now you can lengthen out your half-life because it's not being broken down as quickly. The other thing that's really important about this drug is it does not cross the blood-brain barrier. And again, that's because we do not want it to get into the presynaptic cell. If so, we wouldn't be able to use dopa, our L-DOPA at all. So the amount that this actually increases it is pretty significant from losing 98% of the L-DOPA outside of the brain, we now lose only 90%. So we get 10% into the brain. That's a big difference to get 10% instead of 1% or 2%. That means we can drop our L-DOPA dose significantly. Okay, so let's look at carbidopa then. So carbidopa is an LAADC inhibitor. And it's always given adjunct to L-DOPA. And adjunct means along with. Because it wouldn't do us any good to give LAADC inhibitor if we weren't also giving L-DOPA. That's the only reason it's there. So carbidopa, remember, decarboxylase for L-DOPA, is inhibiting the LAADC in the gut and blood, blocking conversion to dopamine, but it's mechanism cellularly is it's increasing the L-DOPA that reaches the brain and increases synaptic dopamine levels in the striatum. So that's what you want to happen. The molecular is exactly what enzyme and what's it doing on that level. So carbidopa itself has a generic name, but if you want to give it in combination with levodopa, that's called Cinemet. And Cinemet is an easy one to remember because emet for emesis. So you're reducing the amount of emesis, you're reducing the nausea. So levodopa plus carbidopa is cinnamon. Now, when I give you guys drugs, I give them to you as generic, and then if there is a brand name that's commonly used, I add that to brand. On an exam or when we're discussing it, I give you both. So if you see both of them, on, a t on the uh, slides, you're going to see both of them on an exam. Something like carbidopa is, has been generic for so long that I'm not giving a brand name for it. However, if it is a combo drug, then you do need to know the two or three or four agents within the combo. And that's because if you're at a pharmacy and someone says, what's going on with Cinemat? You need to be able to know what the individual components are before you can really talk about what the drug does. So in this case, if I ask you on a test, what are the components of Cinemet and what do they do, you'd be able to tell me that it's levodopa and that's there to increase dopamine in the brain, and that it's carbidopa and that's there to reduce conversion to dopamine in the gut and the blood. And the combination effect of that is you have decreased GI side effects and you have a lower dose of L-DOPA needed because a larger percentage gets in the brain. So for the side effects, carbidopa itself is not really having any major side effects. Um, really the side effects that you're seeing with Cinemet are going to be from the L-DOPA still, so the MGPA, but the G is reduced, so you have reduced GI side effects. And again, very important, L-DOPA crosses the blood-brain barrier, but carbidopa does not. Okay, so now we love Cinemet. Cinemet is great. This has really helped us. Can we make this even better? So when we look at this, we've already inhibited a LAADC in the GI, but we're still losing a lot in the GI. We're still losing 40% here. So if we inhibit COMT, then we block breakdown products, and now a lot more of it is going to be able to get into the blood. Now, I don't have numbers for you on how what percentage that changed it, and obviously some of the COMT and LAADC are still going to be working in the gut because at pharmaceutical concentrations, we don't completely block enzymes. 
But now we're getting a lot more into the blood, and if we have a COMT inhibitor that is also absorbed in the GI, then we're also going to be blocking it in the blood as well. So now we had that LAADC blocked in the blood and the COMT, and now we can get even more of it into the brain. So instead of 10%, now we're going to get over 10%, quite a bit more, although, I, again, I can't give you a number. And so we're going to have a lot more L-DOPA, and that means a lot more dopamine. So now, again, we have been are able to now further reduce. So we're going to further reduce our original dose. of L-DOPA to get the same neural effect. Okay, so now we have entacapone. And entacapone is our COMT inhibitor. It inhibits the peripheral COMT and it reduces the breakdown of L-DOPA in the gut and blood. That lets you decrease oral dose of L-DOPA and just like when we talked about carbidopa, by decreasing the um, breakdown, we increase our half-life. So break down fast, break down slower. L-DOPA, half-life increases. And again, does not cross the blood-brain barrier. So when we look at Intacapone, the um, brand name is Comtan. And that one's easy to remember too, because C-O-M-T, the activity, the mechanism of action is it's a COMT inhibitor. So while it's really a lot of times people want to memorize either the generic or the brand, the reason I give them here together is because I want you to kind of look at them as a unit. So just like you memorize someone's first and last name, if you can memorize Intacapone Comtan, then that's often that brand name is going to tell you something about how that drug works that's going to be really helpful. And tacopone plus levodopa plus carbidopa is stay levo. And again, that's a great brand name because levo for levodopa, stay for stay longer. So mechanism, we saw that the molecular mechanism was inhibiting that COMT, blocking the breakdown of L-DOPA. Now, I mentioned here that it also actually blocks breakdown of dopamine because we didn't talk about it um, so much in the GI. We talk about it when we get to the dopamine synapse. But both dopamine and L-DOPA get broken down by COMT. So the cellular effect is increases dopamine reach to the brain, resulting in increased synaptic levels of dopamine. Again, side effects in tacopone doesn't have a lot of side effects on its own. But when you combine it with L-DOPA, you're still getting those motor GI psychiatric and autonomic side effects. And again, does not cross the blood-brain barrier.